we're doing a lot better than before. We're trying to get that rank one spot right now. We're becoming better and better. We just need some time to get used to each other. We're having a bit of a slow start. If we stay confident, we're also going to play better. Great start this split, so yeah, we have a lot of confidence. Gentlemen, to week four of the European League of Legends Championship Series, broadcasting live from our studio in Cologne, Germany. I'm Joe Miller, and joining me is Trevor Quickshot Henry as we continue into the summer split and see which of our European teams are going to head to work. Yeah, and at the moment, it is still anybody's game, with some of the squads still trying to find their footing and others trying to strengthen their hold at the top of the table. Now, before we get into today's matches, let's take a look back at the highlights from yesterday. One of the big stories was that Brown was enabled here in Europe for the first time. He was enabled and he was thoroughly banned out. Three for three in the LCS. We did see him picked up in all three matches of the Challenger Series semi-final, where Voidal, who was playing for Ninjas in Pajamas, went two, two, and 24 behind the moustache, and he used the massive shield to help them win that series. And yesterday we also saw Fnatic come out in a very strong performance and get the win against SK Gaming. Yeah, Fnatic just outplayed SK in absolutely every way. They had perfect control. Their use of jungle invades with the four red trinkets and the one blue trinket was exquisite, and they strangled the life out of SK because they couldn't move around the map. And in another upset, Gambit managed to take down Alliance and keep the 7-1 Gambit curse alive. Yeah, taking down whoever's at the top of the table at the beginning of a split and Gamma just played yesterday, uh, played very well yesterday. They had good team fights, they had very good dragon control, they had intelligent, rotational, positional play which is a sentence you don't associate with Gambit in the summer split, and they deserve the win. Certainly looking better, that's for sure. And our last bit of news for today is that the Copenhagen Wolves will be playing with a sub in the mid lane due to Kaltard falling ill. Yeah, so they brought in Mazarin. He played for Gaming Gear EU at the Season 3 World Championships. He had a very mean Gragas and an Orianna, and we'll have to see what champions he's going to play to, because Gragas is no longer as viable in the mid lane. Really excited to see how Mazarin does here today. Let's have a look at the current standings, though, in the European. LCS. Even though the top two teams suffered losses yesterday, they remain at the head of the table where Alliance is in first with seven wins and two losses, and SK Gaming in second at six and three. Yeah, moving past the ties in the center of the table, we do look at the Copenhagen Wolves and Rocket as both teams are two and seven sharing that last place. But we have another four games coming here today, and we'll be starting things off with a matchup between Rocket and the Super Hot Crew, followed by Gambit Gaming versus Millennium. Then Fnatic will take on Alliance, and we'll wrap up today's LCS matches with the Copenhagen Wolves versus SK Gaming. After that, we'll hand it over to Freak and Zyrene with the European Challenger Series semi-finals as H2 Gaming take on Loblin Shaw for a chance to battle Ninjas and Pajamas at London next week. And for more information about the schedule, the teams and the players, head over to lolesports.com where you can find all of that and much more. You can check the stats as we head down the road to the Summoners Cup and you can also vote on today's matchup. Just give a thumbs up to the team that you think will win on the schedule and we'll check in before each game to see how you've all voted. And to find out how you can join us at the studio here in Cologne and watch the LCS Live, just click on tickets at the top of the page and that's where you'll find all the information that you need to know to come and join us. And now it is, of course, your, time, uh, your turn and your time to share your thoughts with us. Jump onto Twitter and tell us which team do you think has the strongest map control in the European LCS and why. Yeah, you guys think big picture. I'm just thinking yesterday, Fnatic with their trinket invade strategy definitely had the best in my mind you guys at home remember to send your answers to us at lol esports use that hashtag lcs we will read some of our favorite responses later in the show and this sunday marks father's day for north america and the uk and while it's celebrated on a few different dates around the world we sat down with the european lcs pros to find out how their dads have impacted their careers and how they honor their real world supports it's father's day <laughs> father's day 
Well, it's actually it's different dates for for countries. My sister always reminds me when the date is, and then she sets up the present and I just give her the money, and then I'm done with it. <laughs> we usually celebrate some stuff on 23rd February, uh, and that's the day of the man, the day of protector of Russia, and usually we're celebrating it with our father's grandpas. I'm quite close with my dad. He didn't really support this at the start, but I think now he actually supports me. He even watches some games as well. And my father is really supportive of the game. He tells me that he watches all the, all the games I play at least. Uh, of course he is supportive. I mean, yesterday he sent me an SMS like, congratulations to me that we lost <laughs> again. <laughs> but usually he's very supportive. <laughs> He always encouraged me to, to stay focused and to, to keep on, even if we lose sometimes. It's been uh, nice to see uh, what uh, the guys are doing and good to see Jay Ring. <laughs> My father is very supportive and I'm just going to try to call him and just say, hey, I was thinking about you and I just wish you a good day. Always great to see families getting behind their players. I know I wouldn't be where I am today without the help of uh, my old man as well. I agree with that. My dad doesn't watch, so mom tell dad I say happy Father's Day. Wow. <laughs> so let's get into our first game of the day as Rockout take on the Super Hot crew. Now, the crew have already taken down Rockout once they split, although yesterday we didn't see Rockout play as their opponents, of course, were forced to forfeit their match. So the unknown factor of Rockout might just play into their favor. Yeah, so in theory, Rockout have had some extra time to prepare for this game. They have more information to work with as well. It's the first time we've seen them on patch 4.9. And the last time these teams uh, faced off against each other, Rocket made a very brave call. They let Kassadin through picks and bans, and their team comp was not able to contain Selfie on the champion. Now, considering the importance of overpower for Rocket, all eyes are on him to get a comfortable champion that can help his team secure a win. Overpower is very, very important for Rocket. He's been involved in 57 out of the team's 69 total kills but he's actually only secured 27 last hits on champions, which puts him in sixth place out of all European mid laners. So while his kill participation is high for his team, he needs to get more kills if he wants to help Rocket win. On the other side, the Super Hot crew was absolutely controlled by Millennium yesterday. And even though their objective game was strong, they had no answer for Kerp on Twisted Fate. And that's a champion that Selfie himself has played. And also that we know that Overpower has a taste for too. Yeah, I agree with you. And Twisted Fate did not have the same impact for Selfie when they played and lost to Millennium during week one. Selfie just took far too long to actually use his ultimate, the Destiny, to get to those side lanes. Then the few times that he did try, Kerp actually interrupted him and shut him down. So the Super Hot crew, when we're looking at the games between then and now, have shown a focus on objectives, even under pressure. And yesterday against Millennium, they did have more towers, and they were pushing Millennium around the map, but they had no answer for their opponent's team composition. Yeah. They had no answer to that twisted fate. The reason I'm going on about it a lot is both of these players have used that champion. We're seeing it being played more in Europe, and I do think it's going to feature during picks and bans. Yeah, whether that's a ban or a pick that gets through, we'll find out soon. But first, we're going to take a look at the starting lineups. On the blue side, it's Rockat with Zazas in the top lane, Jankos in the jungle, Overpower in the mid lane, Selva the AD carry, and Vanda the support. And of course, on the red side, we have the super hot crew with Mimer up top, Impaler in the jungle, Selfie playing mid, Mr. Oz the AD carry, and we will fail her as the support. So let's check in and see how you guys predicted this match will play out. According to the votes on lolesports.com, it's actually a 71% advantage for the Super Hot Crew. That's some big numbers, but if you look at current form, it's hard to argue with them. Completely agree, and the Super Hot Crew are having, uh, are growing their fan base at an exceptional rate during the summer split. There's a lot of support behind this team, and they're earning it. They're playing yeah. very solidly. I do still think their strategic, their macro level game is quite good but they're just a little slow to reacting to uh, possibilities or opportunities in certain, certain cases, like against Fnatic. It took them a very long time to close that game out. Uh, so they need to realize their strengths and weaknesses at a quicker pace. And for Rockat, things not looking brilliant for them. I mean, they've picked up that one single win against Gamut, of course, got the forfeit yesterday against the Copenhagen Wolves, which is probably going to help them in the grand scheme of things. The fact is, though, that Rockat really need to hunker down and get some victories somewhere. I completely agree. What we have seen from Rockat in the past few weeks, the more standard lanes are playing into their favor because that is where they are stronger than this rotation-based lane swap meta. So let's find out then what's going to be banned and what's going to be picked here as we go into champion select for Rockat versus the Super. 
for Hot Crew. First ban actually coming out here for Rockat will be Twitch. Not wanting to let Mr. Rawls get his hands on that one. And another brown ban. He's now, well, he continues to be banned 100% of the time. And I'm not going to make any stupid bets today about growing a mustache if he gets through. Yasuo also banned out against Selfie. Something we've seen time and time again. And when you don't ban Yasuo, he punishes you. As Alliance found out. Very true. Kassanen is still up and available. Not anymore. So mid lane bans are being focused for the time being. And there's still a lot of champions up and available in, in regards to the top lane. So what do Super Hot Crew prioritize? Do they want to get rid of Jax or do they want to get rid of a jungle champion? Because all of the junglers are still up. Let's have a look. Jax taken away as the final ban. Kale was also removed and looks like this is going to be a very easy first pick for Rockout. Ziggs left up in the game. We know how strong Ziggs is on multiple fronts, whether that's sieging down towers, whether that's defending towers with his brilliant ability to wave clear. That's going to be the first choice here for Rocka. And Overpower was the first Ziggs player during the spring split to actually pick up the spirit of the oh. Spectral Wraith over on uh, his Ziggs in the mid lane, yeah. farming up a lot of bonus gold. And we know it's a comfort pick for Overpower. He has played it a whole lot. I'm not. I'm not 100% sure on this Rengar pick. We know Miner is a Rengar player, but Rengar has been available in the past and he hasn't actually picked it. So we need to see if this gets locked in. And Impaler had a big smile on his face for that one as well. So I feel we may be getting drawn into something here that's possibly not going to happen. We'll have to see. Actually, the Super Hot Crew switch away. Going to go with two very strong and safe first picks here. Locking in their duo, Thresh and Lucian. So the safe option for the Super Hot Crew. All of the junglers are still available. The priority ones of Lisa and Elise and Evelyn. So the question is, where do Rocket and Super Hot Crew want to lock in the champions? Shivana is still up. Irelia is still up. These are champions that both Zazus and Mima have played in the past. If Selfie wants to play a pick style game, he could go Twisted Fate. But knowing there's a Ziggs on the other side, it is a difficult lane matchup in the opening stages. We've seen Kerb punishing Twisted Fates with Ziggs in the early game. So Selfie may opt to go for something like a Needle Leaf. It is available, it is still there. If they get uh, some form of disengage, and with Thresh, you've got so much time with the Flays in the box to get multiple Needle Leaf Spears out. So a lot of time being used by both teams during picks and bans. Now Nidalee already featured for Selfie in that mid lane. The highlight probably the one against the Copenhagen Wolves in week two where he ended 4-0-10 in that victory. On the other side though, Rockat locking in the jungler, taking a lease here for Jankos. And we'll also see Lulu coming. Expect that at this point to be um, going maybe into that top lane with Zazus. We've, we've already seen the fact that Zazus has experimented a little bit earlier on uh, when it comes to this year and how he's actually played in that top lane with a few more AP champions. See exactly where that lands could, of course, in the end, still fall to Vanda in the support role. But now we go over to the Super Hot Crew. What are they feeling like for this? Yeah, so Europe are continuing, uh, we believe, the trend of this Lulu top lane. We, we as a region do it more than many of the other regions. What I do like from the side of Rocket is if they have an aggressive jungler like Elise and they have an aggressive support, maybe a Leona, then that Lulu's going to do quite well. But for the time being, you're really just going to use that Lulu to save somebody that gets caught out because you don't have that tanky frontline. We much prefer seeing a Lulu mid with a beefy initiator like a Shivana in that top lane. So Rocket going with that double AP, the last couple seconds do a round down and Super Hot Crew are not going to put Ringo on the top lane. So a little bit disappointed to see that. But Mima has had a phenomenal summer split on Shivana. Six games played, four games won, and you've just got all the makings of a pick flank composition, which is what Fnatic ran yesterday. They can come in from the sidelines if Super Hot want to run Twisted Fate. He would fit very well with that flank opportunity and it would negate the zoning power that Ziggs and Lulu offers. Or they could also just go for a Nidalee, get some spears, flank and go for team fight. So we'll see what he decides to go. Well, the side for Rockat here, locking in a Jinx and possibly Morgana, but Jinx definitely going to be in there. And Jinx is another one of those AD carries that has kind of fallen out of favor. We saw a lot of her in the spring split. Not so much here the case. People focusing mostly on Lucian and Twitch, to be honest. Yeah, they're, they're definitely the go-to champions. And Rocket have actually banned Twitch in seven or eight of their nine games. They, they do not want to deal with the champion. It also makes you think Salava doesn't play the champion because they have banned him a lot, a, a very high percentage of games. This should be the first time we've seen Salava and Jinx this split. And I'm a little worried for him because Evelyn should be able to get to him. Shivana 
should be able to get to him. And there's a lot of opportunities to get to that back line. So risky play, but there is a fair amount of protection from Lulu, from Morgana, from the zoning Ziggs offers. So Rocket are going to be banking in these team fights on protecting Jinx and allowing Jinx to get all the damage down while Ziggs and Lulu offer zone control. They don't have the strongest of initiation, but I don't think Rocket want to play that game. I think they do want to be a little more reactive and play the poke defending game with the two APs of great range. So on the other side, the Super Hot Crew's final choice here, looking for a mid laner that will go up against overpowered Ziggs. Oriana, we say this time and time again when we see that, and it will actually be locked in a very all-round strong champion is Morgana with that scaling up into the late game as well. Yeah, and with the Orianna, you've got safe wave clear, which the Super Hot Crew were lacking. They were relying on the culling. Now you can just put the command attack down and let the ball clear the waves out. So we didn't see the Twisted Fate, who would have given wave clear, but less team fight presence. And I think the Super Hot Crew are looking more for a forced team fight composition, allowing Shivana and Evelyn to, to go in from the sidelines, you get a good shockwave on, and try to reduce the impact of that Lulu wild growth or the AoE damage that Ziggs offers. But the thing is, if Super Crew don't get good flanks or get good positioning, that shockwave is going to be very difficult to land. We'll have to see, guys. Well, now that the squads are locked in, you guys have a chance to change your vote somewhat. So tweet at LOL Esports with hashtag ROC win or hashtag SHC win, and we'll see if these lineups have managed to sway your votes, uh, your votes somewhat. Of course, it was about, I think, 71% in, uh, in the pre-game there. So a big total in favor of the Super Hot Crew. As said, we can't really argue with that now, looking at current form between these two teams. However, you have the chance to change that. I don't think it's going to change too much, though. I don't think so either. I think the Super Hot Crew have put together a very strong comp. I do think they can split push. I think they've got strong uh, team fight capabilities but they need to take advantage of the vision game. They need to make sure they get ahead so that Siobhan and Evelyn can come from the sidelines. Soaz did a fantastic job yesterday of always finding the right time to jump in with Dragon's Descent yeah. against SK, and it's going to be on Mima to do the same thing here against, um, against Rockout, because if they, if they don't time it correctly, the Black Shield and the zoning from Ziggs and Lulu, it's going to be very difficult to overcome. Well, here we go, in-game then, Rockout versus the Super Hot Crew. I think an important game for both sides. Broca, as I said before, just needs some wins on the board for the Super Hot Crew. They've had a couple of difficult losses, I think, on the bounce now, where they've had some real troubles being involved and really putting up a fight in their last two encounters. So we'll see if things have been talked about overnight and over the last week and whether they can come out strong here against, honestly, a team that are struggling right now in the league. Yeah, I think the Super Hot Crew uh, have definitely showed a a level up in their mental approach to, you know, objective play and, and moving around the map because you can you can see it very clearly in how they approach the game. If they if they can force Rocket's hand in a good lane swap early on, they can put Rocket immediately onto the back foot. And it looks like Super Hot Crew with a very focused invade trying to look for any opportunities. The thing is Overpower does have good range in these bouncing bombs, so they're gonna take a lot of poke uh, depending on how long they stick around. Hot coming out there and Rocket had already started to move away. However, Mima's been completely separated from the rest of his team. Will he be forced to use a flash here? Jankos going to be chasing him with those spidelings. The bombs come down and the first blood is going to land in the lap of Overpower. He's Ignite finishing off the kill there. And well, that's not what you want at level one for the invade. Okay, first blood is not worth the amount right now that he was previously in League of Legends, but first blood is still a first blood, and we can see that Overpower has gone back home to shop, and he's going to have a lot more to work with in late. Yeah, grabbed himself a couple of wards. The first blood comes in like 1 minute 20. Yes, you've given over a couple hundred gold to Rocket, but it's not a massive, uh, it's not a game-changing loss. And just as I was praising Super Crew for their objective and their decision-making, they decide to blind invade and get themselves caught out. So not the strongest of moves. I do think it was like a half-hearted invade. Mima was going in, the rest of the team was kind of backing out. So maybe a little bit of miscommunication between the team in regards to what they actually wanted to garner from that play. And we are going to see a lane swap, but it's not 2v1, it's going to be 2v2 and they've just moved their duos to the top lane and they've left their uh, top laners, respectively, on the bottom. Mima, no TP, so keep that in mind. No TP. Zaza still having his available to him. Also interested to see how Jinx comes in. As we said, first time that we've seen Jinx here in the summer split, as I mentioned before, was also a 
big peak back in spring, but since uh, the likes of Twitch have really come to favor, we've been seeing less and less, or no jinx, actually statistically correctly, uh, correct on that front. We'll see. A vote that came up a little bit earlier on. Apparently, you guys feeling like the Super Hot Crew maybe in a little bit more of an advantage. It actually increased by 1% in the Super Hot Crew's favor. Every single point counts, I guess, at this stage in the game. Um, I do think that, you know, for, for Rocket's team composition, there's going to be so much pressure on keeping Salivar alive. Yes, you do have great damage from Ziggs. Yes, you will eventually have good damage from Lulu. But in terms of the team fight presence, because Super Hot Crew are going to be coming from the sidelines, it's going to make Overpower's life very difficult for landing those big Mega Inferno bombs. So if they cannot keep Selva alive with all of their abilities, Smite Fights, oh, we're Paler. We didn't even have it available, so we couldn't have, couldn't have taken that anyway. Yeah, I think we was hoping that it had taken Yankos a little bit longer there so he could actually challenge for that. Doesn't get it, and that's a nice little uh, cheeky pickup for Yankos on his way out. As we uh, expected here, Overpower doing a great job of farming up in the early stages of this match. 22 to 17 CS, he leads on that front. Impaler, meanwhile, is on the top side of the map, and we'll see if he actually puts any pressure down onto Selva and Yang, uh, sorry, and Vanda, who actually have all of their summoner spells available. So, no massive danger really, even with Evelyn on that top side. No, and you, this this goes back to the style of play that is becoming more and more apparent um, in 4.8 and 4.9 in Europe. It's just these almost straight up lanes. You are seeing the 2v2s, you're seeing the 1v1s, and it's giving us these extended periods where we can see who is mechanically superior in the laning phase, and then whoever makes the, the fastest and smartest call to go for the objectives. What we've been seeing from Elise jungles in North America in the same time frame is three, four, five minute dragons when you have Elise. You can mm. juggle the aggro very effectively with the spider. And we actually seen yesterday as well in the last game of the day, if memory serves. So we need to see if Rocket on the same page, if Rocket can uh, take advantage. Not having the AD carry and support there may mitigate that or, or lower the risk. Yeah, I think so as well. Stop them from getting so uh, aggressive on that bottom side of the map at the early stages. This top lane, as you mentioned, the duo's up there, currently 36 to 32 CS, so Mr. Rawls having a bit of a harder time there. He's had the minions pushed onto his turret for quite a while now, but we will fail it. Starting off with the shield, we'll be able to help him out somewhat with that execute of the minions underneath his own tower. However, this could be interesting. Impaler moving down towards the bottom lane. And with that aggression out of my mind, I thought Zazus may have sniffed they out a bit in. of a problem there. He's been spotted by the tower Impaler as he comes around the corner. Will he force a flash? Yes, he will. Yankos flashing away. Mima went very, very low, though. Yeah, the the combo, the power of that Glitalons catching both Mima and Impaler mitigates the kill threat. But summon a spell burn, so that is a successful gank from Impaler. He has a few minutes where he needs to rinse, repeat, and come back. And once Mima has uh, got access to his ultimate and maybe his first itemization purchase, they may try to put some kill pressure. But technically speaking, Lulu is fairly safe against Shivana, has all the tools to slow him down, turn him into a munchkin, wild growth himself, and get out from the So uh, Zaz is just going to play a little safer in that bottom lane. Yeah, I don't think there's much of a problem really overall we'll see and both tps are now up which obviously allows them a bit more of an easy time when it goes to uh when it comes to com going home recalling and getting themselves right back into the lane currently mimer is leading in cs over the two so gotta give him some real credit for that one we mentioned yesterday that at least coming into yesterday's games his kda and overall performance very much improved over what we saw of mimer in the spring split a yeah, very very solid tank player and as the game has continued to evolve, uh, Mimer, I think, has kept up with the, the champion pool available to top laners, as well as the teleport strategy that they need to employ, because he's got some of the best statistics in the region. He's playing Mundo, he's playing Shivana, and he's playing them to a very high caliber. And if you contrast him to, say, Wicked, you sometimes talk about his champion pool, or Soaz, who maybe isn't the strongest with the teleport usage, he's doing very well. Unsung Hero, as it were. Unsung Hero, completely agree with that one. He kind of was just quiet, though. No real hype around Mima, no real uh, negative impact either from him. He was one of those players that somehow gets under the radar all the time as Vanda is going to get himself in Pink Ward down and is able to uh, 
Get himself a bit of ward clearage going on there on that side of the map. Meanwhile, Mr. Rawls headed down towards Red Buff. Thought he might be getting that given over to him, but apparently not. Impaler will just smite that away. So in my mind, the first big objective fight we're going to see will be around the Dragon. And I think Rocket may be more inclined to initiate that move because of the fact that they have Elise. Because Elise is very, very strong at taking the Dragon early on. But the question is, do they do it by pulling? Celeban Vanda down to help them, or do they try and put Yankos in the top lane for a gank to get the tower? Oftentimes you'll only see that sort of dragon engage once a tower objective has been secured and you've got the numbers advantage. So we need to see what the question is. For the time being, Rockat is going to go for an early invade. Impaler does have smite, and again, uh, well, he didn't have a previous. He's going to pick a fight though. Yeah, going to throw down his ultimate here. He's going to have Orianna coming down. Mimo will join in as well. There is the Dragons ascent over the side of the wall. And Yankos going to be the target here. But I think he's got the speed, thanks to Lulu, to actually get away from it. The shield mitigating some of that damage. And it's a nice blue steel forcing out two ultimates there from the opposition. Not going to be available if any further objectives come to play. So Rocket, with the first aggressive move of the game, and they come out ahead, securing that objective, denying it from Selfie. He does have the Chalice of Harmony, though, and he has got a tiny, tiny CS lead of Overpass. So he's doing well enough. But once Overpass gets his hands on that Ancient Golem buff, he's going to be able to punish Selfie a little more. We'll see who gets his big rate. And he will be Overpass. Overpass. Nicely done there. Moving in, throwing him up with the Satchel Charge and finishing off there with the bomb as well. So nice little move from Overpower. As you mentioned, a little bit behind in CS in this lane by now. Also want to just point out the AD carry totals because there is a bit of a disparity already working out. Selva does have the advantage. Got a BF sword start as we also see from Mr. Ross. Yeah, so it's actually an, an interesting um, uh, start to this game because neither team is looking to punish an opponent. Yankos and Impaler have not been particularly gang heavy which is somewhat expected on an Evelyn. But when you look at Yankos, he's farming up very well, 40 CS. He's already finished his Spur of the Ancient Golem. And we talked about how Rocket are going to be relying on Celeboff for damage. There's a very big indicator that Impaler, uh, Yankos rather, wants to be a tank. Oh, they're going to go on Zazus again. He's almost got Flash. Yeah, no ultimate here for Impaler, though. And I have to feel that they're not really going to get much out of that one. His Flash just coming off cooldown. And look at this. Rocket moving straight in towards the Dragon with Morgana and Jinx coming through. Lulu pushed up in the lane as well. I don't see anyone challenging from this Vanda. He's just going to go up there and put a ward down into the Tribush, which will spot one of them coming through. Impaler, of course, invisible. First Dragon of the game going over to Rocket. They can go for a Tower Dive as well. They've got Enough members on this bottom lane. Elise can juggle the aggro very effectively. Look for the cocoon. If it lands, they're going to go in. And they do land it onto Impaler this time. The aggro actually from that story went onto Selva though. So not really able to do much, at least for now, in this bottom lane. Good damage into the turret. But I think between Elise and Shivana, uh, sorry, between Evelyn and Shivana, they may be able to clear things out. There was a TP from Zazus onto the top lane as well to try and hold his turret. Ro uh, Rockout looking for the first tower of the game. They're going to get it as well as a dot by. Landing onto Impaler, they chain the CC, and Yankos gets that kill. Super Mega Death Rocket came through, but wasn't even needed. It's a nice pickup for Rocket with a tower and a kill. Dragon, kill, and the tower, all stemming from Rocket making the decision to go for the objective. They pulled Celeban Vanda away once the wave in the top lane was pushing to the Super Hot crew. Mime has been caught. He's been caught. I think he's tanky enough uh, at this point, and Celeban was taking damage from the turret, so decided not to go in there as the Mega Inferno Bomb was actually used there by Overpower just to clear out this top lane and give a little bit less pressure on Zazus' side and also really bring Overpower back when it comes to uh, the farm because he's starting to lose out. However, Rocket still have three men. There is now a three-man reply from the Super Hot crew. This should be enough to defend this turret. They're going to hold this one off. What I really like about how Rocket have, have uh, pulled this, this very nice lead in the early game is they made the conscientious decision to force the minion wave in the top lane, then pull Celeban Vanda down to this bottom lane for support. And we talked about how with the Elise on uh, your team composition, you've got superior dragon control in the early game. So they took advantage of it. They made the play, then they punished to get a tower. So I really like the decision making from Rocket, but Super Hot Crew haven't done anything to try interrupt them. Super Hot Crew have been very passive in this laning phase and they've given Rocket the time to make an informed decision. 
Seeing the first items actually coming out now as well with that gold lead for Rock Out. Bloodthirster is done for Selva, whilst Mr. Riles only got the ingredients for that one and not finishing it off. We see the Athene's Unholy Grail is finished already in the mid lane for Selfie. Not quite done on Overpower's side, but I'm guessing that he's sat on a decent chunk of gold. And look at this Rock Out moving from that bottom lane straight into the mid lane. Super Hot Crew had recalled from there, and they get a free turret. That shouldn't happen. I mean, Selfie backed away. Rocket happened to make the move for the middle lane, literally as Selfie had moved away. So a little unfortunate for the Super Hot crew, but you, you do have to give credit to Rocket. They made the aggressive move. They've secured the second tower of the game. And Impaler is sniffing around. It's very clear Impaler wants to try shut Zazus down. This is the third gank. Let's see if this one works. Well, he's got Wild Growth available. He's got Flash available. And there is the Wild Growth. Will knock both of them up. Even putting down a good return on the damage towards Impaler. Blue buff again is going to be stolen away by Rockout. Second time in a row that Yankos will smite that one out for the victory. They may, however, lose his turret. But Impaler is actually tanking it up here. It goes very, very low. Almost being finished oh, off. Throw he down the That was really, really well done from Impaler. Impaler was so close to being taken up by that Glitter Lance. Very, very close indeed. Manages to sidestep it at the last second. Tower was secured in exchange for a blue buff, but Rocket have set their sights on the inner turret. There is support from Super Crew, and that's the wave clear of the Orianna. Able to not only clear the minions, but prevent Rocket getting closer. Salivar needs to have more ranks in that queue to see how, uh, how he's doing before he tries to siege up those towers. But for the time being, uh, Rocket, a very commanding start to this game. Looking incredibly strong, and this is the rock out, maybe we could say, of the spring split that surprised everyone in where they managed to finish, trying to put down some damage here on towards that middle outer turret, but sufficient cover already there with Overpower, Selva, and Yankos all coming in to make sure that there was no damage done onto that middle outer turret, and that leaves Rockat with the lead on multiple fronts here. A bit of ward clearing out as Vandert will spot the pink that's in that death brush. And a little bit nervous about sticking around to finish it off. I think he didn't quite have vision of everywhere else, but not a problem really. Blue Wolf also spawning on the rock outside of the map. Let's not forget that Yankos stole the last couple away from the Super Hot Crew, and Overpower will get his own. So thorough buff control here from the rock outside. So the question is, who's going to make the move for the next dragon? I think that that's going to be the focus for Rockat, and that could be the opportunity for the Super Hot Crew to regain some footing in this matchup. If the Super Hot Crew can uh, get Rockat to clump up together and land a strong shockwave with Evelyn or with Shivana, that's how they can get back in the game. But for the time being, Super Hot Crew are nowhere to be found. This is the third tower they've given up, undefended. Two of them back to back, just not responding and not respecting Rockat's rotation. And they need to move quickly here. They've only got Mima defending this top wave. There's a Siege minion in there as well. They've got a lot of damage. This is four men from Rockat pushing on through. They're going to send We Will Failer up there, but he's really not going to offer too much. And Rockat get his second turret in the top lane completely uncontested. Mr. Riles should be able to get rid of this outer turret in the bottom lane here, but Rockat having a bit of an easy time here pushing those turrets through. 20 seconds until Dragon. Super Hot Group do grab a tower out of the deal, but they've lost an inner turret. We've seen a few interesting things. Mimus grabs himself a Banshee's Veil as his first uh, big item collection. And I do think that's a great Mega Inferno bomb from Inferno, uh, from Overpower. Um, I do think that the Super Hot crew are waiting. They've got a team fight composition. They want to be flanking, they want Orianna to hit multiple rocket members. But Orianna needs time before she can shred people and destroy people. And Super Hot crew have just taken too long to try and pull the trigger. So let's see, they've started the dragon off. Look for Vanda to land a good dark binding. That'll be their initiation. That's a good box going down though from We Will Fail. It'll stop them coming in and allow the dragon to go over to the Super Hot Crew. We know Zaz has TP'd in for that one. Mima also teleported down towards the dragon area. Should a fight have broken out, didn't happen. The Super Hot Crew get a dragon pack. That's vital at this stage for keeping them in the game. Yeah, it really, really is. And the way Rocket are playing, they didn't want the team fight. I think Rocket uh, recognize and appreciate that in a straight up head to head 5v5, their team comp will most likely just get run over, will just get trampled by Evelyn, by Shivana, and then the Oriana ball on top of them. So instead of putting themselves into a team fight, which they would probably have lost at that stage in the game, they give the dragon up. It is a smart decision. The thing is, now Rocket have got the most difficult task of breaking that inner line of turrets. 
They've caught Super Hot Crew out, but it should, in theory, be easier to defend the mid and the bottom inner turrets with some uh, some vision, with some warding. And you can see we will fail it on counter warding duty. Look at that statistic. Five blue buffs, four rock at one for the Super Hot Crew, which is not a good statistic to have. A Zaza's going to come in here. They get this low on selfie. They knock him up as well, but have they got the damage to finish off? Shield comes in from We Will Fail it. In the end, not able to finish off Selfie, but look at this, it's allowed Rocket to put the pressure back on towards the bottom lane where Mr. Raz is trying to clear out, will dash away from the uh, traps there, and it doesn't matter either way, they've managed to get that inner turret, and you were talking about that, the hard inner turret line, usually hard to break through, but the fact is Rocket putting pressure on middle, forcing the Super Hot crew to move around, with a wave pushing with them in the bottom lane, and Rocket moves so well across the map for that. They are doing a very, very good job of playing the map in this matchup. And had the Super Hot Crew locked in a Twisted Fate instead of an Orianna in the laning phase, they would have had the Destiny available at this point to try and flank, to get the vision of their opponents and try to find those picks. Because Super Hot Crew have got a team fight comp, if they can't get Rocket to group up together in three, four, five members, I think they'll be very hesitant to start a team fight. So smart play from Rocket, Zazus and Overpass zone, and the rest of the team go for the objectives. Let's see if they can keep this uh, this tug of war with Super Hot Crew. Pull them to one side of the map, grab an objective elsewhere. And Jankos actually just took another blue buff away from the Super Hot Crew, continuing that trend of really problematic buff control out of the Super Hot Crew. Not really had anything for Selfie to work with in this game. See that Selva backing away will take the red buff from the Rocket side of the map. And I'm guessing that he's actually sat on a decent amount of gold here to go home and spend. Bloodthirster was complete earlier. Got himself Berserker Greaves in there as well. So we'll see exactly where Selva decides to go next in terms of his item build. Yeah, he's a little bit of CS behind Mr. Riles. Uh, that is, of course, a symptom of moving around the map and, uh, and playing the rotation game. He hasn't been sitting in a single location long enough. Pilot almost gets caught out. But again, we're getting closer to Dragon respawning. The previous one was secured by Super Hot Crew, uncontested by Rocket. And I think Rocket have built themselves up a nice lead, but they're not exactly, you know, so clearly ahead that they can just instantly win team fights. It is only two or three thousand gold right now, which is not a massive amount. But look at Yankos' build. He's got Aegis of the Legion as a second item. He's playing full support tank jungler. He wants to be the front line. He wants to annoy and interrupt Super Hot Crew as long as possible, just further adding to this, uh, you know, sort of protect the, protect the Jinx sort of comp that Rocket had put together. And we said earlier, the, the, the ideal scenario with Evelyn, come around the back of people, flank the team. There's been no full-on team fights here out of Rocket. They've only got two kills to their name right now, one of which came after about a minute's play in this matchup, which shows you how slow it's been in terms of Rocket wanting to team fight, either, and even with the lead. But the fact is Impaler's not really had much of an impact. He forced a flash from Zazus, and that's about it. But look at this slow gonna come down. Here's the ulti out of Vanda. I think they're gonna be able to lock up Mima. No, he flashes last second there before the ulti procs. But Selva now will be forced to flash on his own. Good job, Burns! One of the hook lands. The flame will come in, and Selva is gonna go down. That's a nice pickup for the Super Hot crew. Very, very nice pickup. We will fail as flash hooks have been very good. He did that against. Fnatic as well of memory serves, flashing over tidal waves and getting the CC. What I like from the Super Hot Crews have instantly responded. Not only did they get the kill, they've come back to defend a tower. So, oh, they've caught Overpower. They've caught Overpower out there with the hook, but no real follow through because Selfie had already been CC'd up at the back with a good binding coming out. Meanwhile, Zaza's putting down some pressure and they're zoning them out really, really nicely here. And that's the problem, this Six getting ahead, got a lot of damage already with the Athenes, with the Void Staff, got a needlessly large rod in there as well. He's hard to stick around when Ziggs is there. There is one minute until Dragon. So the Super Hot Crew with the kill, it came a little early. They weren't able to uh, transition from a kill to the objective. So what they have done is got a few extra wards in the river, but the Rockap vision is superior to Super Hot Crew at this point in time. Teleports are available, so for this next Dragon engagement, it looks like Rocket are moving into position. It looks like they're trying to get uh, wards down to predict where the Super Crew are moving in and then securing that objective because there are, again, it's only 2,000 gold and the longer Rocket waits, the more likely Super Hot Crew are to find an opportunity to flank. That's a good binding. That is a very strong binding. 
Red Shield's coming out though, so preventing most of the damage follow-up that came from Rockout. However, they are the team that have the position there by Dragon, which will be coming up in just a couple of seconds. And once that is actually there, we'll see if Rockout are just going to go straight in and take it. They've got four men there, as you mentioned. Crucially, TPs are up for both Mima and Zazas. Dragon going to be started here by Rockout. Yeah, Mima's closer, so he's not going to need the channel time of Teleport to get in range. Rockout are split up. Yankos and Silva are trying to rush the objective down, while Impaler wants to sneak it away. Let's see how far Zazas can get. He's teleporting in. Teleporting right to the front. Mima is in the thick of it as well, but I think the support crew are going to be pushed away from this one. I think the Dragon actually did reset there, so he's going to have to be worked down from full HP. Once again, they've managed to catch out Impaler. Is he going to go down the bottom? comes through, lots of damage coming in, but Mima right in the middle of the team will actually have to all team self out of there. In the end, it's Mr. Riles against the kill. There's the shockwave coming in. Overpower goes low. They can't quite finish him, but they turn it around on towards Selfie. Selfie got himself the kill before going down, though. Oh. These are a 1v1. The hook on to Selva, but we will fail her. We'll pull him into a death. Does go down in the end. That was the ignite from We Will Failer, and it will be a three for two overall there in favor of the Super Hot Crew. We Will Failer lands a very crucial hook, which allows the Super Hot Crew to get that extra kill with the last tick of that ignite. The one thing I want to give highlight to is Rocket had actually started the fight incredibly, incredibly well. They did not present themselves as a five man unit to get caught by a shockwave. There's Mima coming in with the TP. That's a very quick back away. Zazus does not want any of that. Yankos is sticking around. Let's see who's going to get the dragon. Doesn't look like Yankos. Or maybe he does. Flash and Smite. Oh. Joe's not over yet. You have to be real careful because Impaler's low and he's going to get bound up. There is the kill. Yankos will get that one. The dragon really baiting the minion, but Zazus will also die. Mr. Riles gets that kill. Will they stick around here for dragon? I can imagine so. They've got Oriana who will finally get a blue buff of his own. Thresh coming down as well. The support crew going to have the numbers advantage by Dragon. Let's have a little look at that one. What I really liked about how this fight started is Rocket kept themselves split up. So the power of Super Hot Crew is, is reduced because they can't hit multiple targets. You've got Vandal and Overpower zoning from the left. You've got Zazus zoning from the right. And it was only once uh, Yankos got sort of uh, found a, a, a pick onto Impaler that the team fight really broke off. But again, look at Super Hot Crew. They want to be grouped up. They want to be fighting as a team. And they didn't get the opportunity to do so. Um, great culling on the fallback from Mr. Yeah. Rawls. Landed that last killing blow, and look at the death sentence from We Will Play Lab. Holding Celebi in place, and Mr. Riles and Mime are just going to get that last bit of auto attack damage. Ignite gets the kill. Minions helping out with that one as well. So, how does that leave us? We're 25 minutes into this game. We're tied five all in kills, but 5 2 in towers for Rockeye. It's giving them about 2,300 in the gold lead. Let's have a look now if that changes, because Dragon has been started. Two park crew are too slow to react to this one. Rockat get themselves another one. Two out of three so far. Yeah, very well played. You did also highlight the fact that Selfie got his hands on that blue buff a few minutes ago. That's actually the first blue buff that he's got his hands on in a long time. They picked another fight, they've caught Selfie. And Selfie's in no man's land, but again, a good lantern from We Will Failer will allow him to get back a lot of shields on both sides of the map here. We saw it during that last fight that it looked as though Impaler was going to die. Then he got shield after shield. So many heals came in onto him and he was able to stick around for it. Here's another blue buff spawning in which will go to Overpow. But Rockat, the team that are still in control, but these team fights still not a done deal. No, they're definitely not. What I do like is that Super Hot Crew, uh, sorry, that Rockat are actually playing their comp very well. They're not. They're not putting themselves in a position where Super Hawk can punish them. And as this game continues to grow, we're going to see whose late game decision making is going to reign supreme. What I like about Super Hawk Crew's trinkets options, they've got three reds and a blue, which is in my mind right now more about the defensive play. They need to clear out the wards in their jungle because Rocket have spent a massive amount of time moving through Super Hawk Crew's jungle. So whereas yesterday we've seen all those reds, uh, being used aggressively for Fnatic. Today, it's more defensive for Super Hot Crew. They don't want to, they don't want to be caught off guard. They don't want to be surprised. Rocket, on the other hand, they want to clear the vision. They want to come from the sidelines. Uh, you know, landed good dark binding, landed glitter lance, which will allow Celebar to get all of his damage down because he's almost got that last whisper completed. And we've already seen how quickly he melts towers and melts dragons. Now, Super Hot Crew could do with a couple of towers here. Middle outer turret still not down for them. Such a crucial one. Definitely the most important on the outer ring of turrets overall. 
not even been able to really do much damage, but they are starting to <laughs> settle in around that one as overpowers. Like, yeah, I just I just farm them from a distance while you're trying to take them away as well. Yeah, nice try, nice try. But overpower secures it. Uh, CSY and Subaku are doing a better job. They've they've definitely held uh, higher numbers, but the goal difference between the two 80 carries is definitely swinging over time. Um, Mr. Rolls, for the time being, if you look towards the right-hand side of that graph, it actually is a lot even, uh, a lot closer than it, it, it was a few moments ago, thanks to the Dragon. You know, Rocket did grab themselves the Dragon. It is worth a lot more as the average level is climbing. And Rocket, we talked about how difficult it is to get to those inner turrets. They snuck the bottom inner turret, but they haven't caught Super Hawk unawares since then, so they haven't touched the middle inner turret. Yeah, also, on those graphs, got to keep in mind the numbers on the left hand side because that wasn't even though those screens look huge not a massive amount of gold in there and of course the 202 for mr rolls compared to the 023 of selva certainly going to be helping out as we may have a fight kicking off the binding landing on towards impaler wild growth comes in but not doing a massive amount but there's the bomb to the backside mr rolls catches a bouncing bomb as well super mega death rocket not going to do a whole lot impaler will take the lantern away and a lot used in that fight but no one goes down very Smart from Rocket again. They have the fight on two fronts. They keep Super Haku split up, and it means that Selfie needs to make a decision. Do I use a less effective Shockwave on only one or two members, or do I hold it? But as Rocket grouped up the fight, they didn't chase. They start the Baron, uh, Impaler's in trouble. Impaler's dead. Zazus will get that kill, and the Baron, as you said, already started Selva and Zazus, the two men that will be trying to keep them away, of course does have the range to get through. Is Selfie going to bounce around thanks to Overpower trying to get in there? The Shockwave will manage to get Selva, but he flashes into the Baron pit. And look at Baron. It's not taken all that much damage. Finally, they will be on it with four men. Only one man trying to keep them away. Baron going to go low. Mimer now moving in. Selfie and Mr. Rawls there as well. Baron is still alive and still doing damage to Rocket. A last second repel comes out of Yankos. The shield as well. Stopping all that damage coming in and a massive brawl around Around the Baron, Baron doesn't go down. No kills apart from the initial one onto Impaler who got caught flat out. Without Selva being dedicated on that Baron, that was always going to take a long time. Yankos has built full tank. He doesn't have a lot of damage to burn through Baron, which is why we looked at that for 30 or 40 seconds. It ends up being a single kill in favor of Rocket. And what Rocket did do effectively is force the Super Hot Crew's hand. They did make Super Hot Crew come to them. But what they didn't do was respond as well. Salivar was somewhat unsure. He was standing on the, out uh, uh, the outside of the pit with the rocket launcher as opposed to being with the minigun inside the pit to secure the objective. So Super Hot Crew come away, I think, making the best of a bad situation. They only lost one and the objective is still there to be contested. Good stuff really overall and as you said it was <laughs> the lack of damage that kind of caught me out there. I thought Rockout were going to be doing the Baron a lot quicker than he was actually going down. Probably gave Super Hot Crew a bit of a lifeline there because they did come in a little bit later to that one. Either way Baron not going to be the focus just for now. There's a lot of wards on it from Rockout. And they are however sending Zazas towards this bottom lane. Again take note of the teleports both Top laners do have teleports available, so Mima will probably be the one that's sent to deal with Zazas wherever he goes. So the Super Hot Crew need to lull Rocket into a sense of security. If the Super Hot Crew can get some vision down around the map, like that's a great mid lane ward that we just scrolled over, it will allow the Super Hot Crew to look for opportunities to flank. For anybody who watches the North American LCS, last week uh, Cloud9 was blue side, they were playing against uh, CLG who were red side and Cloud9 pushed up the middle lane. They were feeling very confident. They had five of the members just going to the inner turret in a very similar situation to what we see Rock at in right now. And it allowed Dexter to get a perfect five man flank with Evelyn. That's what Tsubaku want to do. Not necessarily in the mid lane, it could be around Baron, it could be around Dragon, but it all stems from vision. If Tsubaku don't have that information, they can't make the flank. And here we have the Dragon being done. As I said before, both TPs are available to come into this one. However, Lulu is already joining the fight. So Rockout, gonna get this one started or are they? Are they gonna try and make a play on the inner turret? We see that Super Crew, oh, Selfie getting caught out there off to the side. And there's a lot of CC, don't make a mistake here. Rockout got the chompers to go down after a cocoon lands 
after we see a dark binding landing. If one of those hits, it's going to be followed up completely with a big chain. Mime is actually trying to get rid of pink wards here, which may become a problem or not. That wasn't Overpower worth it. Overpowered knock him away. That wasn't worth it. He's been forced to use Dragon's Descent before Baron's up. There's no Shockwave, but there is still Smite. Look at Rocket. They're focusing it down with that minigun of Salivar and Super Crew. I think they want a challenge. Going pretty quickly. We will fail her off to the back. Mime are trying to run interference on the front side, Dragon's but they're off. keeping him away from this one. There is a binding going through on towards him. Fail the bomb will follow through. Overpower able to pick that one up. The Baron not being regen. And there is the pickup. Rocket get the first Baron of the game. Will he chase on for more kills? I think the Super Hawk already in a safe distance away. But Rocket working hard for that one, but playing it perfectly. Selfie's going to need to take a good, long, hard look at himself for getting caught out in that position. They were split away from the rest of his team. The Super Hawk can't afford to take those small skirmishes. Because of the power of Lulu with Glitter Lance and the Morgana Binding, that's a three second CC on the Dark Binding. Rocket with Baron have taken 50% of the tower off in this uh, mid turret, and I think they're going to stick around. They've got minions in the top lane that they can switch around to, and they just need to deal with the minions in the bottom lane if they want to continue playing all three. And we see Ziggs just being a constant problem, and Selfie going to get another Binding right on top of him. The Lantern went down to offer him some support. Dragon, by the way, he's live here, so Rocket are just going to simply back away from that middle inner turret that they've just taken and time for themselves an easy dragon pickup and this is where the game gets a little bit out of control the super crew are trying to hold it in but then you lose a baron a tower goes straight after a couple of kills mixed in then you lose the dragon on top of it and we start closing in on 10,000 gold if rocket did not have baron and a 7,000 gold lead i would actually say that the super hard crew now have the possibility to get good positional plays because Rocket, in order to seize those inhibitor turrets, have to fully commit. They need to get the poke from Ziggs down, the poke from Lulu, and they need to be pushed up very, very deep in the lane. Super Crew are going to be cheeky, steal away that last outer turret, just let Mima tank it up, and that's just catching Rocket a little off guard. Uh, Rocket, of course, recalling from the Dragon. So for the Super Hot Crew, the, the name of the game is look, look for the opportunity to punish Rocket on an aggressive move. Because Super Crew are behind in goal, behind in Baron, if they make an aggressive play, they can get punished and, and, and really fall further behind. Whereas if they wait for Rocket to make a move, Super Crew have the option, dive in, get a good shockwave. We still haven't seen Selfie hit more than one target with a shockwave. And being caught out a couple of times here as well, not having the most comfortable of games, that's for sure. And look at this Rocket getting up to the steps of that inhibitor turret in the mid lane. In fact, a little bit split up here. Jankos is trying to fend off both Mima and Impaler, doing a good job of it as well. And the question now is, can Rocket hold on to this turret with the constant pressure of Ziggs bouncing those bombs to the back? Look at the vision around this mid lane. Rocket are so confident in their play. They've got pink wards behind them and to the left. So if Evelyn wants to come through that side, she's going to be revealed. Impaler's not going to surprise Rocket. So this is very intelligent play from a Rocket. They're using the range to their advantage. Overpower actually just used his uh, Mega Inferno Bomb to kill some of the minions. He killed Weevil Failer with the Mega Inferno Bomb from the back line. So strong play. Let's see what they can do with it. Oh, Impaler actually getting a little bit caught out. There's a Shockwave. We'll drag two of them in, but the tanky is to win. That wild growth on Impaler will just get away from that one. Barely any health remaining, and now Rocket just gonna tank up this turret. Selfie will be forced to back away, and they brute force their way through. Didn't even see that we will fail a kill, by the way. So a five versus four always gonna give them a bit of an advantage. But I also have to question then: is five versus four? Why start a fight? Yeah, it's a desperation play. You know, if Super Hot Crew had surprised them and got a kill with Impaler or Mimo or something, it would have worked out. I think this is just the poke. So Satchel, let's just see bouncing. And Megan Inferno Bomb. Here we go. Wow. Dead center. That's, uh, That's impressive from Overpower, playing that one completely blind. You know what? I actually think We Will Fail had Flash available, and I would dare argue he was watching middle lane. I would dare say he was looking to see what's the rest of the team doing, because I would not have anticipated the Mega Inferno Bomb for that play. But it worked out, and this is why Overpower first picked that Ziggs. 3-1-2, 320 CS, and he's had some very good 
Mega Inferno. He's controlled the waves and he's just grabbed kills left, right, and center. They also come decisively quick. We obviously get the forewarning in as a spectator, but for them, it's sometimes a little bit touch and go. I may have felt even if I flash away here, I'm not going to have yeah. that for later if I want to make a play or he was even escape center. when it's a five versus five. Either way, it leaves Rockat solidly in the lead, and as I said, that 10,000 gold lead is about to hit 61.3 to 51.9 in favor of Rockat. 7 3 up in turret. It's got the leading kills as well. The question now is what are the Super Hot crew going to try and do to stay in this game? One thing that's now working in their favor, or I can't really say working in their favor, but it's not as much of a problem anymore, is the fact that the Baron buff has run out for Rockat. Yeah, it'll only be a couple of minutes before it's available again, though, and Rockat have played very patiently and they've played very controlled. They have they've made very minimal misplays and mistakes. And every time they have made a uh, a push or a move towards an objective. It has been very well informed. They've they've had very good vision at all stages of this game to deal with Evelyn and to deal with Mimer on Shivana. Because again, if you if you have uh, wards fanned out around you, you're less likely to be caught, you know, off guard, caught surprised. Mimer, for the moment, is actually very deep in this lane without vision. And I'm not sure if Rocket are looking for a kill. I think they're just trying to get some wards down themselves. They don't want to invest everything in killing uh, killing Mimer, and then have nothing for a team fight. Yeah, they're moving into a classic split push, uh, push position again. We see Zazas going towards his top lane. He's going to push that one all the way out. The rest of the Rockout team moving up through that middle lane here. The Super Hot crew, of course, are going to at some point have to reply to this one using Mimer, who's still got his teleport available, but it's one of those slowly but surely things here for Rockout. Step forward from Celeva, take a couple of hits down onto the turret. They've got super minions moving up the mid lane now as well, so the pressure starting to build for the Super Hot crew. And, you know, this is Rocket just catching everybody by surprise. Nobody would have expected Rocket to have this level of uh, intelligence and, and strategic movement in comparison to last week's game. So, you know, coming out of the dark yesterday, having not seen them play, this is a very positive upswing for Rocket. They handled the, you know, early laning phase well. They made the first aggressive moves towards Dragon. And they've taken so many towers just under the noses of Super Hot Crew, punishing them for not being able to defend. And Rocket have done a very good job, so you have to commend them on, on the strategic play. Let's see how they break this final set of towers. Even the Dark Binding is great. Oh, We Will Fail has gone in. Oh, it follows through there just as that Black Shield actually will time out, but We Will Failer is going to die here, no question about that. Mima right in the middle doing a good job, but Celeva dead in away to the back, and therefore to safety as the bomb comes through. Sidestep by most of them. Mima will go low. There's the Flash Cocoon from Yankos. Gets the finisher as well. He's now on a rampage. The selfie gets caught out. Bound back through and look at that three men instantly knocked down by Rockat this is going to give them a second inhibitor of the game this could be the game there are super minions on the Nexus turret and Rockat may look to finish watching through here as I said for a vital win for Rockat if they can pick this one up Mr. Ross trying his best to defend now just dashing away from that dark pine and there is the first turret going down Mr. Ross going to be chasing Celeva going very deep on that one it's not really going to matter they've got Zazas I think no no it's still, I don't even know one of them tanking up those turrets <laughs> and there is the Nexus now going to be focused down Overpower looking for a final kill but he doesn't get it doesn't matter though because Rockat have managed to take down the super hot crew very very coordinated play from Rockat, and I'm thoroughly impressed with their decision making. This is a night and day turnaround from last week, where against Alliance, they struggled to take advantage of their early, early lead and early game. And this time around, there was very little hesitation, just very intelligent decision making. They challenged for the right objectives, and they punished when Sukhaku went away. And we said that the fact that they didn't play yesterday, that they got that forfeit win over the Copenhagen Wolves, may have given them some advantage, more time to prepare for the Super Hot Crew to watch their game yesterday, and also not allow the Super Hot Crew to have one more game to watch, to research, to figure out exactly how Rockout are going to come into this one. And honestly, that looks like a completely different team to what we've seen in the first three weeks. Yeah, I, I completely agree with you. And I think every single member of the team was integral to helping out. We see great wild growth from Little Lancers. Yankos had superb ganks. Overpower, I mean, that was a first pick in Stalock Ziggs. It was the quickest champion of the entire pick and ban phase, and it completely worked out. Overpower was just everywhere. And 
I, I, for me, the biggest commendation is just on how Rocket moved from tower to tower in like the 10 to say 20, 25 minute mark mm. before they, they hit a bit of a, a roadblock. They snuck towers, they had great vision. They were sieging mid lane, they had this ring of wards. It, it's just very good forth fort and planning and, and it feels like they've got a grasp of how to play the macro game with this, these compositions in this setup. And I hate to say it as well, but the support crew, since that loss to Alliance, now on a three game losing streak actually, that loss to Alliance was a real one-sided affair. The game against Millennium was pretty one-sided. That one was less so, but still Rocket had control pretty much the entire time. You could put an argument forward for Rocket being in complete control. Brilliant, brilliant play by Rocket. We're going to send it over though to Shox on stage to get some rift side insight from that match with Jankos. Thank you very much, Joe. I'm Efe Shox, the Fortra, joined here by Jankos after that victory. Um, Jankos, you last week were especially under the impression of the loss versus Fnatic. A lot to work on coming into this week. And then, what an early game from you guys. Uh, talk me through the plan. Um, so usually we got good early game, but then mid late game um, we pretty much are bad. Um, but when Reggie came, uh, came back to the house, he said that we need to improve that, and he actually showed us how to do it. So I think early game was always uh, or like um, strong uh, style, but I don't know. <laughs> well, you mentioned that Veggie is back with you guys. How does he help you out specifically to level up your game? He watches a lot of Korean replays, again, and stuff like that. So he knows what he's doing, and we just watch the replays to each him, and he's just showing us at uh, replays of our games, of our GN, how to finish out games, what to do in mid-late game. So he's very useful. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that because mid-game has been a little bit of a, of a problem for you guys. And here, a lot of skirmishes around Baron. Tell me about the decision-making going into that and then having to pull off. Mm, we knew that uh, we had advantage, so we just wanted to ping uh, Baron and just bait them to come to us. And we just poked them, poked them, then bait Nashor, pick up few kills, then again bait Nashor, and finally we took the Nashor and few kills, and we just snowballed from that. All planned. Well, congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, as for us, we're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, Millennium takes on Gambit, and we're going to break down this game over at the desk. Don't go anywhere. Vance, if Vance anyone asks, in. we prepared a lot for this game, OK? If Mishai asks, if Nick asks, we really knew what we were doing. A rock out looking for the first tower of the game. They're going to get it as well as they're not finding. Landing onto Impaler, they chain the CC. And Jankos gets that kill. But in the end, it's Mr. Riles that gets the kill. There's the shockwave coming in. Overpower goes low. They can't quite finish him, but they turn it around. On towards Selfie. Selfie got himself the kill before going down, though. That leaves us at a 1v1. The hook goes to Selva, but we will fail it. We'll pull him into a death. Keeping him away from this one. There is a binding going through on towards Impaler. The bomb will follow through. A set of towers. Look at the dark binding. is great. Oh, we will fail. has got it. Oh, it follows through there just as that back shield actually will time out, but we will fail. is going to die. Yeah, no question about that. 